Yeah. Okay. 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 So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm TJ Radcliffe. I'm Ray Appel. And uh, we're amateur filmmakers on Gabriella Island. Uh, and I was tearing down this building on the back of my property. And I said to Ray, it would be fun to, to film the thing and then make two or three different cuts to produce completely different films yes. from the same footage, just to show people what can be done. And so I came over with my drone yeah. and camera. You had a camera set up. Yep. And uh, that's what we did. We took all the footage, and it was amazing how we used similar footage, yeah. but in completely different ways. Yeah, you'll see. We're going to show you all three films. Uh, I guess the, uh, the first one's a little horror short because <laughs> uh, amateur filmmakers love horror movies because mm -hmm. they're fun to make. Totally. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then kind of a comedy uh, of, of errors. Yes. <laughs> uh, and then finally, a little documentary on, on how it was actually done, uh, which includes some of the late phase cleanup, and, and you get to see the site with nothing on it. So uh, watch and enjoy. Cool. Nobody knows who built it. It was here when we bought the place. It looked empty. But the locals say it's full of lost souls. I asked my buddy Ray to give me a hand taking it down. I figured between the two of us we'd be able to handle anything that happened. I wanted it to come down slow so the souls would have time to escape. I strapped the back wall with some heavy rope, wrapped it around a tree for friction. I hoped it would be enough. It was time to take out the last of the supports. We had a guide fore and aft. This was all that was holding it up. It could come crashing down. Then there was just one last thing to do to walk through the middle one last time. It seemed empty, but then again, so did I. I cut the last support now, nothing was holding it up except the past. I pulled on the forward guy rope. It was like the building was fighting back. There was something resisting. But it gave way. I pulled harder and harder. It began to yield. <laughs> We'd done it. Now, 
there was only one thing left to do. Um, okay, so then mine was a comedy, and I modeled after those two dog characters. We've talked about this on Warner yeah. Brothers, where the one guy's tiny, he's like, oh, hey, Ralph, Ralph, or whatever the dog's name was. So that's the voice, the kind of voices I used. Uh, there's a, there's a, your character is like <laughs> very steadfast very grumpy. and very, very grumpy. grumpy. Yeah. <laughs> and I envision it as a series, uh, pr pretending it was a series of uh, apocalyptic things where your character invents various things, which I, of course, screw up. <laughs> so it was a comedy. And so... Hey, what you doing there, Mark? Well, that's pretty cool. What is it? Come on, tell me. What What are you doing? What are we doing today? Mark? Mark, what's wrong? Why aren't, why aren't you answering me? I'm concentrating. <laughs> See that rope? I tied it off to that shed. I don't want that shed to fall. No, no way. No matter what. You can trust me, man. You know what? We never get in trouble. Are you serious? We always get into trouble. Not this time. This is going to be fun. So the idea is to keep the shed up, right? What did I just say? Dumb nuts? During the coming apocalypse, which is going to come upon us any day now, my missus and I are going to store all our earthly belongings in this here shed. Take a look. It's perfect. Now, Let's reinforce it so it stays up, and it can survive the winter. The winter? Yeah, the nuclear winter. <laughs> Gonna come upon us any time now. Come on, give me a hand with this rope. Why do, you, why do you always get so dark right away? Nuclear winter, give me a break. <laughs> Okay, I'll, I'll hammer this in. You hold the back side. You holding? What backside? Yours or the or the shed? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna ignore that. Now you hold that rope and make sure the shed stays up. I'm gonna go around back here and check a few things out. Do not pull the rope. Okay, pull the rope. Okay, I got it. I'll just I'll just pull on it like this, right? Is that, is that what you want me to do? Okay, Mark. Yeah, I'm oh wow. Bitch, what, what did you do? What, what's wrong? Look at this! What's wrong? Now what? You, you said... Oh my god. You, no! You said pull the rope. I know you said pull the rope. Dumb nuts. It's not bad. Look, I can, I can fix it. I'll, I'll come in every day and, and I'll fix it. That, that doesn't look that bad. Look, there's pieces I can put together. 
I, I can do it all. Let's just have a beer on the back deck and figure it out. Okay, uh, y- uh y- okay, here we go. Uh, cheers. cheers. Yeah, cheers. Yeah. Until next time. Yep. When we take down your shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait. What do you mean by that? You, what? I don't... What? So for the final film, uh, is it's just really a straight up documentary. Uh, I was playing more with sound uh, in this case and trying to get the realistic sound of the building falling down, which meant filtering out the sound of the drone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> which, which uh, and it's just a straight documentary of how I pulled the thing down but it worked really well Mm -hmm. and it produced some quite spectacular footage and and it's obviously uh a deconstruction event so there are some philosophy references in there for the philosophers in the audience welcome to deconstructing gabriola episode four a new rope on this week's episode our event is the deconstruction of this strange shed-like structure. It is at least 20 years old, possibly 30, and seems to be held up primarily by the cedar siding uh, on the lower tier. There is a small amount of cross bracing, but uh, mostly it's held up by hope. To take it down, I decided to guy it up fore and aft initially to uh, support it while I removed the cross bracing and then pull it down forward, hoping to avoid the plum and olive trees that we planted in front. I wrapped the rope around a couple of trees and put this 2x4 in to protect the bark from the strain of the rope. After guying it, I knocked out the cross bracing on the sides, having previously removed the cedar siding. It came away reasonably easily because, in fact, very little was holding any part of the structure together. I'm a little bit surprised that it hasn't blown down in the time since it was initially put up. We fortunately get very little wind here. You can see that that single cross bracing member uh, on the one side is very small and the one on the other side is not much bigger and it only took a few blows from the hammer to knock the nails loose. So I think the primary strength of the structure really was coming from the cedar siding. Once both cross braces were down, it was a matter of grabbing on to the forward guy and uh, pulling hard. That gust of wind came along at just the right moment. All for dramatic effect. Because really, what is deconstruction about, if not dramatic effect? The building did resist a little bit. Well, I'm going through battery power here. I took yeah, some time to regroup and pulled something. harder. Oh, here it goes. This was a point where I knew I probably wouldn't have to slack off the guy rope on the rear wall. Oh. 
slow and beautiful and just short of the olive tree. This is a drone shot from above. That's what success looks like. It's running now, Tom. Yeah, it's running now. Am I in frame? Yes, you are. So that's a celebration. Next comes the actual hard part. It took a couple of days to haul the post and beam structure remnants, which were held together by uh, foot-long railroad spikes, out from under the roof to break the uh, plastic roofing off, which was extremely brittle and is now scattered all over the yard, despite uh, my attempts to clean it up and get it off intact uh, as much as possible. But then there came the deconstruction of the roof itself. The roof was held on by these pairs of toenails from the rafters. That was it. That was all that was holding that enormous roof on the structure. The rafters themselves looked like they'd been nailed by two different people, one of whom uh, was a minimalist, the other of whom felt that the more nails they put in, the stronger the roof would be, despite the uh, board actually being the limiting factor at that point, up to a total of nine nails in one end. They all came out very easily. But a lot of them had to be pounded back and then pulled out. So there was a great deal of this going on for many, many hours. It wasn't all quite this awkward because uh, most of the time I wasn't holding a camera in one hand. Oh, and I dropped the nail. I did that a lot too. Some of them I found. This one, I did not. The other nails came out fairly easily. And fortunately, these ones I got in the bucket, which filled over the course of an afternoon to a remarkable degree. I don't think I'll be buying any nails in the near future. Eventually, I got it down to a couple of rafters and a few of the remaining purlins, and then nothing at all. Not bad for a week's work. Tune in next time to Gabriella Deconstruction, where we build a roof on a pump house. I'm TJ Radcliffe. Thank you for joining us. So those were our films, That's basically it. the same footage uh, for all of them, very similar cuts in all of them. Uh, you know, everyone had the drill going because yeah. uh, <laughs> that was interesting, I guess. It was. It was, and uh, it, in different music, uh, different use of sound, and it shows what you can do uh, with the same footage to make completely different movies. So this is the first production of what I'm calling the... Uh, the Gabriella Movie Lab, uh, which is small, experimental, strange yes, films. Yes. So we will, with any luck, be back producing small, experimental, strange films. Very Good idea. Okay. Something with boats, actually. I've oh. got ideas. Something with a canoe, okay. a kayak. Yeah. That could be fun. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we can do okay, that. Okay, we can do that. All right, cool. See you next time.